Public space travel. Public space travel. And so on and so on. I can't help but believe that in the future we'll see throughout the world an increasing trend toward the next logical step. We achieve full communism. Public space travel. Public space travel and so on and so on. Welcome to Public Space Travel. We are a podcast dedicated to social political critique, comedy, and education. Coming from an anti hierarchy oppression perspective, we aim for progressive radical left solidarity with brothers, sisters, trans, and non binary folks of all stripes. I am Lucy, and with me today are Hunty, Lycan, and Lazarus, of course. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hey. Hi. Um, just real quickly, I want to say that we really want to go over topics uh, or interview people that you all want to hear about or are interested in knowing about, um, as well as make any corrections for things we have said. Uh, I am prone to lots of mistakes. Um, you can always reach out to us at publicspacetravel at gmail.com or a voicemail, which is 208-502-1406. Also, if you enjoy the show or not, please support us with a small monthly patron pledge of solidarity for only $5 a month at patreon.com slash public space travel. Begin show. Hold for applause. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on today's episode, we will be talking about socio-emotional learning. I've heard socio-emotional or social-emotional. So okay. Whatever you prefer. Um, can we do like a socio-social? Socia social emotional learning. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Okay. Okay. So or S E L. Yeah. So today we'll be talking about socio and or social emotional learning, and it'll be S E L. Soco emo. Sorry. Yes, socio emo learning. Um, <clears throat> and um, so today we'll be talking about social emotional learning. And with us is our first time guest, Lycan. Welcome to the Public Space Travel Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, did you want to maybe talk about yourself, your interests, and so forth? Yeah. So I am a graduate student, um, actually in educational psychology, and a lot of my emergent research is on social emotional learning. So what is it? Um, what is it not? What could it be? What is it not currently, um, but potentially could be? Um, and so my research is mostly qualitative. Um, so meaning that I'm not as much into surveys and numbers and large sample sizes as much as more collaborative, smaller scale, community-based um, research with um, people who I see face-to-face. -face. And yeah, I'm still kind of in the early stages, like I haven't really started my dissertation yet, which will definitely be around social emotional learning. But as I've been learning more about it, there's a lot of things about it that really excite me and a lot of things that really trouble me. And so that's why I was excited to talk today about just kind of the history of it. Um, when we hear that a lot in like Western education, social emotional learning curricula and programs and policies, um, what does that mean? And how are those connected to these wider social issues and power relations and conversations going on? Awesome. So. Cool. Well, thanks. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. What a wonderful introduction. Um, so maybe we can start off then. Um, we talk a little bit about what uh, SEL is, socio-emotional learning yeah. is for maybe our listeners out there who don't know or don't have a sense of it. Yeah. Um, so the term really didn't come about, as far as I know, until the late 1990s, 1990s-ish by the, um, what is it? CASEL is the acronym, C-A-S-E-L. Really the committee for academic and social emotional learning, I want to say, um, really this growing movement that education is about more than just quote unquote academics. So more than just cognitive, um, and trying to open that mm -hmm. up to social emotional aspects. And so it's been very like back and forth, like between public audiences and scholarly. And so the conversations that have been going on, like, I think a lot of people have heard of Howard Gardner and the idea of multiple intelligences. <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. That's my reaction hmm. to. I have some critiques of Howard Gardner. Um, but the idea that intelligence isn't just about an intelligence quotient score or a mm. test score. Um, and that's garnered a lot of public attention, but there's also been a lot of misconceptions and a lot of these ideas of like, let's focus on emotional aspects, let's focus on the social, but then let's indoctrinate them into a system that's still neoliberal, still focused on rational measurement and assigning a score 
And so social emotional learning is related to a lot of like measurement techniques. There's the idea of emotional intelligence, Mm. actually, even assigning scores like your emotional literacy score, like how good are you at emotion, basically. Mm -hmm. And so it's been connected to a lot of like the self-esteem movement, um, positive psychology. So there's been a lot of good aspects of trying to recognize like students as more than just machines to fill with knowledge and like Mm -hmm. package and ship off to the labor force. But then there's a lot of contradiction because we still are in a system that has this emotional rational binary that we haven't really unpacked yet and still values um, particular types of like white Western colonial knowledge. And so a lot of my research question is what happens when we have these two conversations where people want to acknowledge emotional aspects of being and want to pursue social justice and like improve students' empathy and social skills and self-awareness, but then that's taken up in a system that really only knows how to market and manage and measure things, um, which is kind of a like brutal reductionist way of saying it, but also is a reality um, that it's still a hyper-rational system. And so, so there, well, yeah, hold on. Can, I, can I stop you for just a second? Yeah. Like, and, the, you, that was a lot. And I feel like maybe there 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 are parts there that would be really helpful to unpack mm-hmm. a, a lot a little lot a lot a little a lot little bit lot. So <laughs> like can we? So I don't even know where where to start because I wasn't taking notes. And so I so you mentioned a binary. Can you mm-hmm. talk a little bit about what that looks like? So I think I, what I heard you say was that there's a binary between like sort of like rote learning and the kinds of schooling that kid, you know, testing those sorts of things. And then maybe like an emotional aspect to learning. Is that the binary that you're talking about or? There's a lot of binaries going on, I feel like. Um, But one of them is the idea of like reason and logic and like rationality versus emotion or intuition or embodied knowledge. Um, And so like with that, there's also gendered binary, right? Like there's some are seen as more feminine, like emotion is seen as more feminine and rationality is more masculine. Um, And so there's a lot of different like systems of oppression going on within that. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, a lot of it is the idea of what do we count as like cognitive rationality versus um, feelings and sensing and like other ways of being in the world. So it's like we're trying to recognize that, but Mm -hmm. still take it up in a rational way. So, yeah, so huh. <clears throat> contemporarily then, people are saying things like we need to have a better understanding or a better way to gauge emotional skills and in addition to those sorts of like school learning book smart skills that we want students to have. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And a big part is like what you said, in addition to, I think, so a lot of times these curricula are seen as separate from academics. So like you learn your academics, you learn your English, math, social studies, Mm. plus your social emotional learning. So it's still like these parallel streams Mm. rather than recognizing that social and emotional learning goes on in every discipline. So it's still this like separateness that I see as problematic too. But yeah, it's kind of like, how can we teach students to be social and emotional on top of academics? Um, Mm. Yeah. And there's a lot of different approaches. Sorry. Go for it. Um, Do people talk about this in terms of soft skills? Is this, is that a term that people use when they talk about social emotional learning? Yeah. I still hear soft skills a lot or non-cognitive skills. Um, So it's still like the idea that if it's not cognitive, it's emotional and that it couldn't be both, that you couldn't be rational and emotional um, and that emotion doesn't involve cognition. And like there's some Mm -hmm. contradiction there. But yeah, it's still like this separate thing. Soft skills, hard skills. Do you think that um, kind of in our current discourse that that's kind of a common theme of like holding the rational, like logical um, kind of I guess you could say like method over like an emotional method. Do you see that? Uh, do you think that happens a lot in like political discourse as well? Like, um, yeah. I don't know, like I've heard people like critique like a female president because they'd be like yeah. emotional or something like that rather than like very logical or I don't know. I think what you mean is that Megan Kelly is bleeding out of her eyes. <laughs> is that, is that what you're oh my God. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's everywhere, right? <laughs> anymore. And who's allowed to have what emotion? And that's right. a lot of so a lot of these curricula too are focused on emotion <laughs> regulation. So like the goal is that you can name your emotion, label it, and get rid of it. Um, and that's really get rid of all it? of it. Like a lot of it, there is like there's empathy tools and like there is some more engaging with emotion, but a lot of it is like how can you downregulate? Like when you're angry, how can you stop being angry? And so it's kind of like emotion is this thing to manage rather than read or engage with or celebrate. <laughs> So, which is very problematic. Yeah. yeah. So um, one of my questions I was going to ask later is like, what would an anti-capitalist or anti-oppression, anti-hierarchy, like socio-emotional learning look like? But right. then on the flip side, what like, like is, is SEL uh, like completely not compatible, like contradictory to like fascism? Hmm. And so like, are the, or are there like elements that you could co-op and totally use? Yeah. And when you said, uh, yeah. you know, to recognize your emotions, to like manage yeah, yeah. them and then get rid of them. I was like, holy shit. Like not saying that yeah. socio-emotional learning does that, but I was like, oh, okay, so there's potentially like entrances or yeah. cracks for that. I don't That's know kind of how I see it is that, so I often think of it in terms of like transgress, transcend, transform. Mm. So I would not say like, let's get rid of social emotional learning because it has a lot of really cool elements. <clears throat> and I think if we try to just like, let's transcend, transcend all the neoliberal, like hyper rational problematic parts, like that's not necessarily possible to just get rid of that and then transgress. Like we can't just ignore that and like try to make totally new curricula that don't even acknowledge that that's the emotional or educational reality of a lot of school systems. So I try to see like, kind of like what you said, like entry points, like transformation, how could we hmm. like recognize the problematic parts of these curricula um, and be aware of that and like get people to critically hmm. see that that's happening and it's tied to capitalism and it's tied to white supremacy, hmm. um, but also to like build on the good parts. So if there are these curriculum that are like, let's promote empathy and engaging with emotion. Mm -hmm. Like how can we run with that while then saying, okay, but in this module you talk about emotion as something that's supposed to be controlled. So like recognize the contradictions. Mm -hmm. um, can yeah. you, can you talk a little bit though about the problematic parts of the curriculum? Cause I feel yeah. like that's something that we're just jumping over. And cause I think that you're probably really truly well, well and truly like familiar with the curriculum and mm -hmm. people listening aren't, aren't going to necessarily know what you're talking about. So yeah. like, what does that, what does that look like in practice? Mm. Sure. So, I mean, there's a wide range, like the U S doesn't have like one social emotional learning um, curriculum, but a lot of them have five elements and I am going to try to remember these. Um, so one is self-awareness, <laughs> one is self-regulation, um, one is social awareness, one is responsible decision-making and one is something else that <laughs> is social. So it's like, there's those are like the five pillars. So being able to be aware of your emotions, regulate them, engage with others, make decisions. Mm. And then I think another one has to do with like social relationships, like relationships or something. Mm. Um, and so those are kind of the five focuses. And so mm. a lot of the times, like the curriculum that I've looked at, talk a lot about, can you verbally label your emotion? Can you um, recognize when you have an emotion and when it's inappropriate? There's a lot of words, words of like appropriate versus inappropriate emotion. So a lot of it mm. honestly comes back to behavioral control. Like the goal is that students self-regulate. And so they're able to like get back on track with academics. Wow. Um, that's not, that's the problematic really, part. Yeah. Wow. It's really interesting because it feels like, like, like a paradoxical endeavor. Yeah. Because it's like you're you're trying to you're, you're not trying to separate the emotional learning um, from whatever else task is being done. It sounds like, um, but yet there's still like a, you still somewhat have to be able to measure the emotions in a way because to you have to label them and and right. understand sort of like what's happening, um, but like. You can't like attach to the label because then like the, the idea is that it's like integrated. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Or, and if you can't label it, I think that's another thing is it privileges being able to label your emotion, which like to some extent might be a really good thing to be able to recognize when you're feeling an emotion. But also if you're a student who doesn't like, it's a very like Western 
individualistic thing, right. To be able to verbally like label everything that you're experiencing in your body. Um, so it yeah. still privileges that and like these very verbal ways of communicating. But isn't that kind of how we learn anyway? I mean, like, isn't that kind of how school functions is this idea that you have to, I'm devil's advocating. PS. <laughs> but because I think that it's, I think that it's easy to listen to what you're saying and relate that to the, I mean, like, well, that's what school is. Right. Like you, you go to school and you learn how to identify things that you're unfamiliar with in the first place. And perhaps students are coming from these places where no one's insisting that they learn about these things or so I'm like, why, so like, why is that negative? I guess like, wh- like how, and I, I guess negative might be too strong of a word, but like, where does that paradox come into play and why, why should we be worried about that? Is it because we're measuring emotion? Is that always bad? Okay. So I'll, those will be my questions for now. Yeah. Yeah. So I think a big part of it, like seven questions, but I'm starting with those. No, that's good. Um, yeah, I think that's a big thing too, is that it's not just about like, these are totally bad. We should replace them with a whole nother curriculum. It's more, I feel like who's, knowledge is being valued. So in education, like we teach kids a lot of good things, but what we teach them is so cultural and like the group of people deciding what counts as like a good emotional education is still a very like particular group of people who are rooted in like in colonial Western white ways of knowing. Um, and so it's not like those are all bad. And I know I'm responding to your devil's advocate. Um, but it's the, what is closed off or what's not seen as common sense. Um, And so ways of relating to emotion that don't make it into the curriculum, like that, whose ways of knowing are those? Um, Hmm. So when we think about like part of school being about learning how to identify like what you're feeling and put a label to it and cope with it, like that's not a bad thing, Um, but like what, whose knowledges are that? Like, um, whose labels are we using? Like if you're a girl and you're feeling anger, so often that's pathologized. Like it's either cute and dismissed, like, oh, that's cute. Um, or it's pathologized. Like if you're an angry woman, that is very different than being an angry man. And being an angry white man is very different than being like an angry boy of color. Um, and so Mm -hmm. that's a thing a lot of these curricula don't acknowledge either is that like people's experience of emotions and the ways that society responds to their emotions, isn't just this equal stream where when I feel anger, the man beside me has the same response to his anger, you know? So I, um, I deeply understand exactly what you're saying. And also I struggle in education about this in the first place, like always, because it seems like most of most educational pursuits are teaching students how to navigate a white man's world. Yeah. And a lot of the things that we're teaching students are how to navigate those spaces. Mm -hmm. So I guess I sort of struggle with how we navigate spaces where that is very much still our reality and very much still places where we have to teach our students they're going to be for a while. Do you know what I mean? And so I can't tell you in my position right now, how many people have commented on my nice firm handshake. Oh God. Yeah, I can talk about the handshake. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, but do you know what I mean? But you yeah. know what? I'm really grateful to my father who was like, nope, like you don't, like you 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 shake a hand, like a firm handshake is is essential. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, it's capital. You, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. As an, or, that might be a bad example, but it's, it's an example. Right? That's a good I mean, example like, because it means that, like, And I think of that a lot of like the transformation I'm talking about too, where if we just say, like, I think of that with the handshake, I hate the handshake. I hate that it's about power and like physical strength and masculine, but I reproduce it to be taken seriously so that I can like speak, like hang with the dominant people to kind of poke holes in it. Um, So yeah, I think the handshakes are actually a really good example of that, like where we can't just like with standardized tests, we can't just say, okay, no, like my students aren't taking it because there can be repercussions like that harm students. Um, and so it's like, how do you push against it while recognizing that it's reality is like what I hear you saying too. Yeah. 
which is hard. Lucy, what were you gonna say? I, I saw you I saw you getting ready. What you got? Um Oh, well, well, going along the lines you were saying about, you know, the handshake and stuff that and navigating the the white man's world <laughs> is that, you know, like learning uh, growing up. It's like if you if you can uh, name uh, at least one of the members of Led Zeppelin, you've got him in <laughs> for any job that you need. Oh, shit. Is that the secret? No, That's the secret. <laughs> I love Eric Clapton. You just have to know like at least one member of like the Beatles or Led Zeppelin or something like that, and you can get your way in there. I love Bon Jovi. I feel like there are some generational discrepancies between these two bands that you're mentioning. There are. It works though. <laughs> Led Zeppelin. It works every time. <laughs> it works. Right. But uh, uh but I mean, uh, uh, I forgot what else I was gonna say. It was related to what you're saying. Never mind. I lost it. Train of thought. Well, if it comes back, let us know. So, so, so where's yeah, that line ahead. then? Where's that line between like what we teach and like where where do we how do we decide like what is necessary and what is harmful and how we're going to measure things because we can't not talk about it in measurement. Like it just right. like I get stuck a little, you know, like trying to figure out what is, if there's something bad that we're doing or if it's great that we're talking about social emotional learning like what like how am i supposed to feel can you tell me please like and i need to know well um so i think both i can't remember what your questions were but like you said or and i think it's both like it's good and it's bad um i think that part of it to me is that it has to be always in transformation like my goal is that it's a never-ending process like that we don't say what mm. it should look like that we keep it open to asking other mm. people what it should look like mm. so i feel like it has to be more local contextual collaborative um which is the theme for a lot of like issues with education is that anytime we try to tell this single story about what it should look like that's a danger because someone is telling that story right um so like who are we asking I think it'd be really cool to see more SEL curricula built from a community. Um, like what does it look like for an indigenous community and not yes. homogenizing all indigenous communities, but like this one, or what does it look like um, in this context? And that doesn't mean that it's that those don't speak to each other, but that it, we, when we have this top down, like these are the five pillars to address with these seven modules. Um, mm -hmm. Like that's what makes me angry. <laughs> um, so. But don't we have to have a starting mm. point? Okay, I'm double advocating. Oh my gosh. Don't we have to have a starting point because I mean, hey, I'm supposed to be Lucy. I'm just kidding. Say again, what? I'm supposed to be Lucy. <laughs> it's short oh, for sorry. Lucy. No, it's okay. Lucifer. No, it's okay. You well, got the you do it. You no, no, but you had the question. I don't. I can't read your mind. Well, and if we have a starting point that's though. open, I feel like that's where it changes a lot. Is that we say that these things are adaptable. Like even the critical scholars I read are like, um, these can be adaptable within a certain box, right? Like it's kind of this, I think of it as like game rules versus player moves sometimes. Um, so like if you're playing chess, like if SEL is a chess board, um, I think sometimes there's these like quote unquote critical scholars who say like, you can make new moves, you can adapt this, but you can't flip the chess board. Like maybe your pawn can move two spaces. And I'm using a very white colonial metaphor, I realize. Um, but also, like, um, why can't we change the rules of the game? So when the starting point is truly, like, fluid and collaborative, I think that's okay. It's more when it's unquestioned, right? Like, mm. when you can change. I've even seen this happen, like, with, um, I think it was an indigenous model. Like, okay, we changed these three words, and now it's adapted to an indigenous community. Like, mm go us for being culturally sensitive but not rethinking like our entire roots of what it means to be emotional or what it means to be um what it means to learn um even the idea of having like separate school subjects i feel like so much of that goes unquestioned and isn't even seen as a starting point it's just seen as the point um i don't know if that's making sense but i think it's that like fluid like truly being open to um self-reflexivity like from whoever is developing and delivering these programs hmm. but that that assumes that like you have school districts where you have teachers where they're like prepared and trained yeah. to do this and 
Yeah. So. I know there's like the realistic and like the, yeah. It's like, it's like communism sounds amazing in theory and in practice. Like how the fuck are you supposed to do that? You know I mean? Like, yeah. like I would love for everything to be like, uh, uh, I'm thinking like, I'm picturing that, um, like m- maybe you, you know about this too, is that like, it sounds like something that would be like, um, maybe brought up in like a, a company retreat or like type of thing where they're having like an emotional intelligence, <laughs> right? Um, what educational type lunch and learn type of thing. <laughs> Brown bag that shit, bitch. What are your strengths? <laughs> Give you a packet, maybe. Yeah. Color coded. Yeah. Do, yeah. Do the like a one of the anagrams or whatever they're called. And anagrams. What are those things? Do you know what I'm yeah. talking about? Like race car. What? No, like an acrostic. Do you mean like an acrostic? Like, you oh, to describe down? yourself. Like. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Strengths finder and. And that's where it's taken up, right? Like mm. all of this becomes super marketable. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's yeah. why even like one of the curricula I'm looking at is um, called Toolbox. And so it has like empathy tool, feeling tool, apology tool, which sound cool, but it's the idea that a curriculum is something that you can adopt and that the curriculum teaches students, not the context and another human being. So it's like where does it just become another commodity, mm-hmm. like a curriculum as something you can buy off the shelf, right? Mm-hmm. So, I like the idea that like right at the top, you mentioned something, how it's like, like I like the idea of it's, it's, it seems like from what I understand is that like, it's an integration of an awareness and that it's not like a, a point at which you're trying to, or like an end point that you're trying to reach, right? but it's something that you're, acknowledging as like sort of like almost like an eastern philosophy where it's like you're continually growing and continually learning and um like incorporating that learning and growth with whatever x that you're doing that was beautifully described yeah (laughs) like that was like like that that. was beautifully described can someone teach Uh, me how to do that though because i'm a little (laughs) we can teach you with the right (laughs) curriculum you can only teach yourself hunty (laughs) <laughs> the truth was in you all along. <laughs> when you're not emotionally no, no, no. heightened, you know. <laughs> uh, like, because uh, like I, I, because I've, I, so like I've recently, like I've experienced situations, not personally, but like in, in the building that I work in, where, hmm. where something, um, like emotionally heightened occurs, and then the response from like staff is. Hey everybody, we're going on a field trip. We're going to go take this emotional intelligence class. Oh yeah. yeah. And then they come back, and that's what I, like they did the the anagram thing as a way to <laughs> learn about each other, I guess. And I and I I looked into it a little bit, and I was like, I don't I don't know if that's I don't I don't know if that fixed it or or what. It seems kind of like a like a band aid that yeah. you're just kind of applying. Yeah. Like I don't know. Is there is there anything you could talk about like? that or like that method of trying to deal with managing emotions like is that effective or is that tied into at all to what SEL stands for or anything yeah and I think that comes to what happens like when a child like loses control of their emotions or has an emotional outburst and a lot of times the model is like time out like you need to remove yourself and you need to like calm yourself and develop coping strategies and like that's on the student, like it's a failure of the student to regulate. Even if it's not talked about in a mean way, like you need to learn this. Um, In contrast to a model where we use our relationships to solve our relationships, like an emotional outburst is always the product of a relationship, right? And so instead of separating the child even further, it's like, let's bring you in closer because you're really angry right now. And that means something, like that's not just your anger, that's our anger. Um, And so I feel like Mm. this discomfort with discomfort like in a, I don't know, like even an organizational setting where something emotionally upsetting happens and the solution is to like get rid of it. Right. Rather than to lean into it. Um, so yeah. as an introvert, I'm like very against <laughs> this. I'm like, no, but it could look so many different ways. Like it doesn't have to be the verbal like, True. talking, like True. you sit across from you and talk, but, um, and it, yeah, that's where it has to be individualized too. Right. True. And True. to like, listen to the kid who's like, I'm an introvert. That sounds horrible. 
and be like, okay. <laughs> okay, but see, this is okay. So I'm thinking about other like uh, neuroatypical, you know, humans who were like, this just is not. This is not copacetic. Like this is not something. Like how how do we how do we account for that? Do you, I mean it just. So like what you're saying is like potentially because it's so universalizing that it's potentially like ableist in certain ways, like making assumptions. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. I could definitely see that. Right. Is there like critical SEL, critical socio-emotional, socio-social emotional learning? I mean, I'm not an expert on the field. I know there's a lot yeah. of critiques of it that okay. I think are really good. I haven't seen as many like here is what it could look like. Mm. There's some that kind of blur the boundaries. Like they're speaking to both camps. They're like, okay, we're going to have some modules. We're going to cite this literature that's been done, but we're also going to use yoga or like um, trying to push out of just this regulation model. Um, and I also, so, so much of what I study is what it looks like on paper. So that could be very different and like will be totally different than how it looks in the classroom and how it's experienced. Um, mm. So that's actually what I want to do for my future work is like, what does it look like to be taken up by humans? Like, here's the curriculum on paper. Here are the modules. Like, maybe there's actually a lot of adaptation going on that like I'm not aware of and that some researchers aren't aware of. Um, but I can't remember what your question was. <laughs> uh, I, I just know that I know people, I know humans, introverts among them, but also yeah. people who would probably either self-identify as neuroatypical or they, or they wouldn't, but that, but they just, they just, you know, look at the world differently. That if you talk to them about like <laughs> this, again, you like that universalizing mm -hmm. stuff that you were talking about, um, it, they, they would be like, Nope, hard pass. Absolutely not. Yeah. Mm. I'll point, I'll point to the picture of the way that I'm feeling today, you know, through frowny face to happy face and then like, and we're done and I don't want to talk about this anymore. Yeah. Well, like even my partner, like, so even the idea of like therapy through words and through talking, mm -hmm. like that helps me so much with him. Like that is torture. Like he would rather have nails pounded into his eyes. Um, and so... <laughs> I'm not even wow. kidding. Um, <laughs> he will confirm. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, like what happens when there's a kid who, like what we call therapeutic is not therapeutic to some people or like sitting in a circle and sharing. And this is where it comes to the atmosphere of the class too. Like it's one thing to say, let's have a safe space and talk about our emotions. And then there's some kids who are like, okay, I don't feel safe in this space. No, I don't have I trust with you. Huh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> So like, how can we expect kids to like pour out their emotions when they might not feel safe in school and might not feel like they're valued in school and, and maybe they do. But, um, so I think that's where the relationship becomes so important too, because we're always different people depending on who we're with. But yeah, mm. I think again, like with that universalizing, expecting someone to be able to articulate their emotions and like emotion even means something different to different people. Like some people emotion yeah. is so embodied and like physically moving could be mm. very therapeutic. Um, and that's where like these they're cool yoga programs. I, huh? I'm picturing like like um like a Tony Robbins situation. Where <laughs> you're gonna have to help me out. Huh? You're gonna have to help me out. What does that look like? Oh uh, Tony um he he's like a I'm inspired. What about Tony Robbins? Yeah. Isn't that what I'm supposed to feel? With Tony Robbins? Tony Tony oh. Robbins is, is like a life coach. Um, oh yeah. Um, like like to go to one of his like seminars, whatever it costs like hundreds of dollars and you have to sign all these NDAs because he just like shouts at people and berates them into positivity or something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a, uh, there's a, a book called quiet about introversion. And the first chapter yes. talks about the experience of going to this thing and being <laughs> like, this is not for introverts. Like no. it's just forcing you to be like, you're happy now. You're would, happy. God damn it. I can't hear you. you <laughs> would the introvert version be like an ASMR of the, but the same guy, same, same stuff. You know, probably actually I I've, I'll fuck with that. And this is a little bit tangential, <laughs> fuck, but even I'll like, fuck. even like the discourse of like um extrovert introvert mm. is still a way mm -hmm. to like universalize people, right? Yeah, like introverts need this curriculum. Extroverts need this one. Like I'm an introvert, very much so. My partner's very much an introvert. We would need a very different mm -hmm. social emotional learning curriculum. Um, so I feel like it's again, like I've had so many retreats where you find out, you know, like your Myers Briggs personality type. And so even ways of like 
subcategorizing people is still categorizing them. So yeah, yeah I think yeah. that goes back to a lot, like a lot of what we've been saying. I'm still really confused about needing to be different a different person with different people. So oh, yeah. I'm going to, I'm really going to have to like revisit that. Okay. Was that called a like, uh, code switching? Mm-hmm. I'm not good at that. Apparently I, actually, I, that's not true. I went out the other day and part of my job now is to like go out and meet people and like be in different spaces. And, um, mm-hmm. I have a business voice. It turns out. Oh, me too. <laughs> Wait, can we hear it? Myself. Can we yeah. hear this business voice? Like, I was like, how, where did that voice come from? And I had to keep apologizing to my husband because he was with me. And I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't know how to turn off that voice. Yeah. I was real worried. I no, I feel it. My voice drops sometimes. <laughs> Someone asked me an academic question and I'm like, oh, okay. And then like, go off on it. <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> At uh, 50 Patreon subscribers, uh, you'll be able to hear uh, Hunty's business voice. That's the reveal. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to hear it now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Voicemail. I'll record it. It'll be, it'll be like a wait, wait, don't tell me. No, yeah, so it'll be like wait, I, the, the prize will be that um, I yeah. recorded a, a voicemail okay. in, my, in my business voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking now I'm thinking about like, uh, sorry to bother you. Because yes, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> His white voice. Yeah. Yes. Is that part of my social emotional learning though? Like I have learned that in certain contexts, mm-hmm. I like my voice. If I make it a certain way, like I obviously I garner a favorable sort of like yeah, like there's some sort of response that I get that it works, right. and so there, therefore I continue to do it. So yeah. it's like my more engaged. Yes, I'm listening to you. Yes, what you're saying is interesting. (laughs) (laughs) And the emotional labor, that comes to that too. Who's expected to perform what emotions? Um, Yeah, and so much of that's not acknowledged in these curricula. Like the idea that, um, I don't know, like pride is a positive emotion. Like pride means so many different things for so many people in context. And um, Mm. yeah, Um, I had a thought and I lost it. Oh, I was going to say all emotional, all learning is social and emotional, right? And that's a big part is mm. like, okay, we've done our social emotional module. Now let's learn in ways that aren't social and emotional. So let's do math, like, which is super emotional. Um, so that's another issue is just these totally like siloed um, disciplines. I like the idea. I have I have some real fucking strong feelings about math. <laughs> really? <laughs> about math? Yeah. Do, do you have Do you have heightened emotional feelings about math? What are they? Can you articulate I have them? Social and emotional feelings about math, both fucking things. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I think I feel like you're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> math is probably like one of Why the most emotional subjects. And letters. It doesn't make sense. Just kidding. I like the idea that it's like it's it's a it's a push towards integrating emotions with like it, it, to me like I keep I keep seeing it like it's like like emotions are not separate from right. actions yeah. and or, or from life and like you're yeah. everything just like how kind of like everything is like political like everything is emotional like nothing exists in a vacuum mm-hmm. and you know trying to separate the two and put them into like different boxes is you know or, or comp- compartmentalizing these things, um, you know, kind of leads to like, you know, just like, a, a, I don't know, like a disservice to your own self. And yeah, I don't know. Is it? it oh, no. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. No, that's it. I, is it possible for somebody to utilize SEL to then better identify and recognize and exploit other people based on emotions? So like could a narcissist or a sociopath or like a psychopath use SEL? Ooh for like malicious ends probably i mean you can guilt like think of guilt as a technology like feeling like what you teach kids to feel guilty about is super manipulative not even consciously but like um not being able to regulate your emotions feeling guilty for feeling negative emotions like i would say particularly if you're a woman um and yeah i feel like it's super manipulative even not like a conscious sociopath but this is the entire premise of rhetoric, really. I mean, yeah. you think about like mm. rhetoric. I mean, ethos, yeah. those logos. Like yeah. you teach, you teach in rhetoric these three components of you know uh, credibility, data, and emotion. Yeah. And the whole premise is to be able to develop arguments or 
manipulation, maybe to some extent, based on people's emotions, based on, you know, appeals to credibility. Like that's mm-hmm. what rhetoric is. And I don't know if it's all bad. Like I'm trying to think of when you would not be manipulating your way in the world because I feel like that's kind of what humans do like to some extent Mm -hmm. I feel like it's really problematic when we don't recognize that we're doing it or how we're doing it in relation to our privilege um but I also think Mm. it comes back to the idea of like you can't I don't think you can be in the world without to some extent performing something that's going to get you something or is going to get someone else something good like even manipulating in ways that will help other people but when we don't realize we're doing that is I think what scares me is when people don't see that that is happening. So I just feel like in terms of social and emotional learning though, like, like I was saying before, so we're trying to teach students how to navigate a white man's Mm -hmm. world. Like it just, like, I feel like the whole system has to be upended so that we're not, we're no longer trying to navigate that world. We're trying to give students skills so that they can, build new spaces for themselves does that make sense like in a perfect world that's what that would look like it's not social and emotional learning or social emotional learning for the benefit of like just living today do you know what i mean it's like how how do you how how would how can you teach students to structure their reality in such a way that it's not towards that thing like what you were talking about like whether that's a manipulation or just you know like living and they can teach us, right? Like mm-hmm. so much of it that I hate is teaching kids skills. Like mm. kids have emotional skills and kids have social skills. And we mm. totally, like it's such an adultist world. Like we're teaching them how to live in a white adult man's world. Um, and so mm-hmm. I think just not listening to what kids are saying, even if it's not verbal. Um, and it also goes to this idea of school being separate from life. Like school prepares kids for life. Like, I think it is your life. I have never not been in school. Um, the 25 years of my life, well, I guess till I was five, but um, yeah, this idea of you're preparing them always for something next, like something next, and which is often like the economic labor force. Um, but yeah, I think what we define as success, getting a job versus like being a socially just, just creative individual. Yeah. Were you going to say something? That makes me so sad and it's so inspiring, both things. And I don't know which one it is. It's both. Like, having had, like, I have children. And so I can tell you that there have been, I can't even count. It's been a lot where I have seen my children think about whether or not it would be beneficial for them to cry. Yeah. And then make a decision to do it. (laughs) I wish I could decide. I just cry. I'm like, damn, that was smart, kiddo. You know, I, my, my daughter wrote me a text about wanting to do something when she was grounded. And I wrote back and I said, okay, write that same question again, but take out the pathos. And she did it. And I was like, okay, so now what's the answer? And she was like, okay. (laughs) Like they can navigate shit all on their own. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Interesting. I'm learning something today. Sorry, Lucy, go ahead. No, I, I love, I love that. I love that. Like treating, when you treat kids, like they're actually smart, and that humans. they will be smart. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And as people, like it's a very radical idea. Like kids yeah. are humans too. Yes. Mm-hmm. Not in the same wow. way. Like not all kids are the same type of kid, but. I actually have always hated it when people, when like, people assume that they know more than students. You yeah. know, I, I have, that is actually really like, oh, you're a kid, you don't, or they or they act as though their reality is unimportant. Yes. You know what I mean, yeah. Yeah. I do tell my daughter, you know, this won't last forever, and that's true, but that's true of all things, and I don't try mm-hmm. to diminish her experience today because mm-hmm. it is her reality, and whether right. it's a microcosm and she's living in this sort of weird bubble, like you said, I've been a professional student the majority <laughs> of my life, and so... I hate it when people diminish that. It yeah. pisses me off. Even when it's little, like I think of a kindergartner who's super upset because like they spilled their whatever at lunch. Like that is big for them. Like that is a fire that is wrecking their day. And to just say it's a, not a big deal. Like I, I do get to some extent, like it can help to put it in perspective, but also like that's your life and you've had five years on this planet. And this is like one out of however many days, like 6,000 days you've had. <laughs> so it's a big deal. That, 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 
I've had some experiences in kindergarten. A, that reminds me of like a story um, I heard about where this dad and his and, and his son were out at a restaurant and and the and the son was bugging the dad to tell him a story that he had apparently already heard before, but he was like, I want you to tell me the story. I want you to tell me this. It's like maybe like a five or six year old or something. And the dad's just like, no, I don't want to. No, stop it. Whatever. And then eventually the kid just goes, oh, okay, well, just fuck me then, right? <laughs> <laughs> you actually heard this? Yeah, like I, I, I well, like I, I heard about this story. Like I, didn't, oh, I wasn't there in the restaurant, there. but I'd heard oh. about so, someone else's experience. <laughs> Damn. I was like, yeah, that's, that's how you feel. Yeah. That's like last night, my cousin's kid, um, she was telling her daughter like, chill, chill. And the little girl who's four was like, I'll chill when you hold your horses, mom. <laughs> she was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> we both need to chill or not chill. Whatever, whatever feels right to you. Mm -hmm. So is, is SEL like mainly geared for like public school or like, is it also integrated so. into like adults? Cause I wonder if they can utilize SEL to maybe manage their reaction to like, okay, boomer memes. So there's been actually some of the programs. One of the cool things is recognizing that like teachers could also learn from this curriculum. Like it's not just about this one way transmission. Um, but then it's like still the problematic parts are supposed to be for teachers. Um, mm -hmm. But wait, so you mean like in a, like to use SEL to calm baby boomers angry responses like, yeah like so chill pill dad like, <laughs> you're, talking about pill like, dad. you're talking about like if like a, if a boomer gets mad at, at yeah. you saying okay boomer and then you go hold yeah. on hold on i see you're getting upset let's go through our sel training real quick like that. <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly thank you yeah and it's like yeah and that's my struggle like if you use it sarcastically perhaps ah okay okay so i guess maybe I my real question was so it's <laughs> is it mostly geared toward like k-12 through public education I, think so um i feel I'm, like that's where the majority appear okay because i'm curious if it label. if it's ever like um introduced into other settings maybe like college level or maybe like at a corporate business getaway that probably like kind of what we're talking about i mean maybe it's a different name too but i mm -hmm. mean it might very well be mm -hmm. and still these like, like conflict resolution that's another word for a similar thing mm -hmm. right which is mm -hmm. so rational and so like it depends on the relationship but um mm -hmm. Yeah, resolution. Also, I feel objective like oriented. Uh huh. Well, I mean, if, if, it, if soft skills is one of those things, then yeah, I mean, yes. I mean, people, I don't even, I, it must have been maybe around those 90s, early aughts or whatever, when we started hearing more and more about soft skills and yeah. how important those were for students to have, you know, like effective soft skills. Like, what? Well, what is that? What do you mean? What? Yeah. And what does it feel like to study soft skills in the soft sciences? Like that is such an invalidating label for like what I do. Um, yeah. And I actually like softness. That's the thing is I don't want mm -hmm. to be told that it can be hard. Mm -hmm. Like I want to get rid of that binary. Like why is soft bad? Mm -hmm. um, like soft can be very yeah. courageous, you know? Or why is it feminine? Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking. It's like there's, 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 yeah. I like softness. I'm a male. <laughs> the definition of soft skills is my hill. that enable someone to interact effectively and harmoniously with other people. Damn. That's so much onus on the person. Like, you must be in harmony with other people. Like, no relationship on this planet is totally harmonious. It sounds like some communist propaganda. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what is like, harmony? You know, like, rela like relationships hullabaloo. have conflict, right? And there are seven soft skills. Do you want to know what they are? There's yeah. seven. Can we go through each one and talk about each one? There's seven. Yeah, sure. Uh, the first one is leadership skills. <sighs> hmm. <laughs> well, it's well, well, leadership. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <say> what? <laughs> leader? Aim more anarchist. Wait, how's that a soft? So, <laughs> like, do. number one soft skill, leadership skill. Yeah. Like, well, that makes sense. Like being able, that's, that goes back to the manipulation, I feel yeah. like. And like, and, and right, like, can you encourage others to, to do your follow bidding. what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So control. You direct other people in ways that is effective and like gets them to do things that you want them to, you know, like, can you make yeah. happy little workers? Yes. yes. Oh God. Lead them. Okay. In second the, one. Uh, in the occult, in the occult circles, they would call that a uh, lesser magic. Sort of like a, <laughs> uh, sort of like charisma and, and charm. 
<laughs> character, <laughs> strong character. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot. Can we please? We if you were talking about like um about introverts and extroverts. We really need to do like our personalities, our D and D personalities. I feel. Like. Oh my god! Yeah. Would you, yeah, you're more than welcome to join us for that to oh, see really? what your. Oh, you actually do that? Yeah, so you can see what your alignment is. I don't so, like. So, what? I don't like taking tests like that. I me neither, but. You can find out your alignment in the world. Like, are you a lawfully good person? Maybe you're chaotic evil. I'm both. Right? You, true neutral. There you go. Not neutral. Both. <laughs> oh, it's like a new category. Yes. Like oh. <laughs> anyway, what's number two? I want to know the seven soft skills. I feel like we need to talk to Lycan about social and emotional skills. <laughs> she threw a punch. You can't see listeners, but she totally oh, threw no. a punch. Yeah. <laughs> like that, just like, shake. yeah. Um, okay, so the first one is leadership. This, and, and, and interestingly, the second is teamwork. Okay. So you have to control your same. workers. But... And some of these have good things, right? Like, there's some good aspects to teamwork. But, but then get. Yeah. Toward what goal? Whose goal? Yeah. Yes. I just feel like it's all upended. If we start with leadership and then we go to teamwork, the third is communication skills. Uh I have a thing for communication theories. But. It's, it seems like it's a little bit backwards now. Yeah. See? Wait. Just wait. Huh. The fourth is problem solving skills. Right. The fifth is work ethic. Of course. And then flexibility, adapt, uh, adaptability. Okay. Is this how? And then interpersonal skills, which is weird because that seems to encapsulate all the other things we've already yeah. talked about. It kind of sounds like um, like the five or six things of how to be a successful mm -hmm. entrepreneur, like a self-help book on how to be a good capitalist. Hmm. It, so it sounds like yeah. the nutrition pyramid. Right. Nutrition. And <laughs> skills, right? Like competencies rather than like once you have it, like you've got it. You've got your tool in your toolbox. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like a level in Scientology. Yeah. You've achieved it. <laughs> You're done. You, What's your e-meter? You got it. <laughs> it it's so like the thing is is that like i i like the idea like so it sounds like it's something where it's maybe more effective in 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 children's classrooms and stuff because they maybe have less pushback to give mm. towards learning these things um are you saying that it, they can't defend themselves is that basically what you're saying or we don't listen what they do <laughs> well i mean yeah like their punches are so weak have you ever been hit by a kid <laughs> <laughs> I've actually been bruised by a kid, so. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. But um, well, like, because like the, I guess the thing that it almost seems like that SEL, it seems like maybe like the the pushback for incorporating this on a more wider scale is the fact that there's these other modalities that are like sort of like you know like like these kinds of things where they're kind of like. In a lot of ways, bastardize and mm -hmm. and for, for, like 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 I was saying before, like as band aid solutions, like yeah, if you if you achieve these steps, then you know you get a you get a stamp, and we know that you did the class, and now we don't have to talk about it anymore, and now you're an expert, and you never have to go through this process again. Mm -hmm. um, but then, like the wording itself, can it can be like manipulated, it can be like misused, and misconstrued so that way when you bring up like the ideas that you bring up with sel and stuff like that that it it's like well i already did that so why do i have to do that again like i already get what you're saying right I, i'm culturally competent I, I, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> like yeah like uh i'm just picturing because i there's a lot of people that I, I i can think off the top of my head where i'm like just bringing this up i could just see their eyes rolling in the back of their head so far Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, uh, this, like, liberal snowflake BS. Uh. Yes. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I could just picture them, like, doing that, and you're like, no, 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 no. And then you can't, you can't even, like, begin to have the conversation because they're just, like, right. you know, already, like, yeah. I already had to take that class, you know, when I had that one fight with Sherlina a month ago, so I don't <laughs> have to do this again. Like, why are you bringing this up? Yeah. And social emotional, like, it's such a trigger word for a lot of people. Like, huh. Yeah. So is it then kind of packaged 
I'm, I'm curious, like the context of like SEL, like and how it's packaged, how it's presented as necessary or mm-hmm. how to integrate it, especially kind of what we're talking about that yeah. maybe a more conservative approach would say like, no, we just need facts and reason. It sucks reading some of the rationales like research tells us that these curricula are important. Like there is evidence behind this that it will improve students' yeah. academic outcomes. And so it's basically, and some of that's strategic, right? Like to get people right. to listen. We often, like I've had to do this in my own research, like let's care about yeah. emotions because it'll improve kids' academic outcomes, um, which is horrible to not just say we need to recognize social and emotional aspects of being because we're human beings and those are important. Mm-hmm. But like to say there's Yeah, you have to find like a different it. way to say it. Yeah. Yeah. You can't yeah. just say like, I we're doing this because we want to make them better human beings. Right. And like yeah. what language you Because have human heard. is not never good enough. We need the bottom line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is such an economic term. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The bo- the cost benefit. They have that too. Like oh. the cost of this program will be worth oh, it God. because the test scores. Yay. So. <laughs> Do they ever talk about how meeting exhausting quotas is that? Like, Probably. Do they run the sh- they run the sheets? And to I find mean, the I get it. Like I say, I've had to do that too, but it's just depressing. And like the weird mixture of like languages they're speaking, like social languages, there'll be like an exclamation point, but then it goes back to research based. And so, a lot of these are catered right. toward like parents. So, oh, right, interesting. Like or to teachers, so it's supposed to be more like palatable, I guess. Um, and so it's like conversational when- tones, but. When you're writing um, a paper or, or anything about SEL, mm-hmm. how much time do you spend thinking about how many exclamation points are too much? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to use exclamation points in APA because it's non-objective. Um, okay. No exclamation points. I use I to push back, but actually some of the journals I publish it, like, or not have published in, I have submitted to, probably would be okay with exclamation points. Yeah. Okay. So excellent. Okay. So I don't know. That's interesting. So exclamation points are not allowed. Not academic. And do they use explanation points to tell you not to use explanation points? Like don't do that. Because that would be emotional. Like the APA. So the American Psychological Association, which like is the king of social research, social science research has very clear outlines and they're very cordial and very polite, very gentlemanly. Um, So you don't use them exclamation points. Or womenly. Yeah. No, No, gentlemanly gentlemanly um i can see yes very gentlemanly um do they all talk very like proper british like at apa depends on the journal womanly would denote like crying or maybe like begging and gender and they're not gendered like, telling you neutral telling you firmly but with authority yes but still compassionately not my gentleman i understand what you want but you can't do it that way you're right. going to do it this way right hashtag not my gentleman no. <laughs> yeah. Those gentlemen, those gentlemen don't speak for me. <laughs> There's actually an article that I was thinking of. Um, it's called Gentlemanly Orthodoxy something in the APA manual it's by Audrey Thompson. Um, but it's an excellent article of how writing style is gendered and raced and a means of controlling how people talk in academia. So. And then recommend damn you. APA wants to control us. We burned it at a party last year. That's amazing. Page by page. Allegedly. Allegedly. Wait, what did you burn? The APA Allegedly. manual. Allegedly. We might have burned the APA manual in a bonfire. An APA journal may or may not have been burned. Yes. At some Maybe. point in history. Rest in pepperoni. <laughs> 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 yeah. I like it might have been fun. <laughs> might or might not. Who would know? <laughs> don't know. I don't know. But you know what? You know what's interesting though? You're gonna follow APA yep. and you're gonna submit to those journals that were yep. APA. <laughs> and someone had to help yeah. you figure out how to F and write in that stupid fucking style. Very so. much. It's like tonight I'm gonna burn it and now tomorrow I'm gonna get my copy off the shelf and look at it. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Oh shit, it was my copy. In this hypothetical reality, that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. So there are so those it's constraints. A par- it's it's a constant paradox. I feel yes. like yes, it is, and it's a really hard like balance to walk to be like radical, but also not just shut down all the people who might listen to little bits and pieces. So. Right. Yeah. Because at the, at the end of the day, we're all human, and we all have 
needs and wants, desires, expectations. Hey, speak pains, for yourself. Speak for sorrows. yourself. <laughs> Don't universalize this. Gentle manliness. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the paradox, right? And like we're all the same, but not. Like, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, <laughs> I guess I guess this is a good point to to end. I know. Do you agree? It's deep. Do you, Do you agree, Laz? No, I don't. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh <laughs> shit. Regulate. regulate. Ah. So there's breathing techniques you can do. Oh. Okay. But there's like the McDonaldization. Like, have you heard of McMindfulness? That's the whole what? other tangent. No. Well, that real quick. Disgusting. So wait, is there McFlurry like, involved? Huh? This makes another episode to me, make mindfulness. It is. Like oh, when you take yeah. up these things in a corporate way, like a mindfulness curriculum that tries to like adopt mm. Buddhist pillars of thought in a very like efficient prepackaged way. So anyway, like mm. breathing exercises are cool, but sometimes just taken up in a way that's like mm. Mc- McDonald's. Um, efficiency. I listen to Deepak Chopra like every night before oh, I go to bed. God. That dude is real calming. Oh, okay. I mean, Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, it's weird. Hunty's not on the podcast anymore. Weird. Huh? I don't know why. Too emotional. Too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> shots fired. Shots fired. Uh, <laughs> what's with all the hysterics? Come on now. I know. <laughs> Hiss literally meaning womb, you know? <laughs> True. Yeah. <laughs> wow. No, let's do it. Wait, are we going to do a breathing exercise? I'm kind of excited now. Yeah, breathing exercises I, uh, calm me down. I've actually tried to lead my partner on a couple, and he gets really anxious and stressed with them. Really? Yes, because he's told what to do, I guess. I was like, so there's like, I don't know, I was doing ones for little kids. So like, there's an elephant on your stomach, and now it like walks off, and I'd you feel dead. this like release. Oh. And he's like, ah, I'm so anxious. So, and I no, wasn't that sounds really horrible. Actually. <laughs> I was just repeating this. You're lying in a field, an elephant walks up to you <laughs> on your fucking stomach. <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Here, children. <laughs> you died. <laughs> Let it go. Let it go. You died. Are I you think, calm I now? Think... You should be because you're dead. <laughs> 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 My heart is increased, actually. This is right. not fun. <laughs> <laughs> or the whole, like, tense yourself up and then release it, you know? I feel like we need to go around and do as our, like, our, our fade out, like okay. a, uh, a, a, a guided mindful um, breathing exercise. That's where, we'll where each... this all started. Yeah. Well, we should all like go Our around and do it. Why is the as a board? Huh? Oh, is right. this the 1980s reference that nobody remembers? No, oh, I, I just that saw is. that movie. And it's like, like the egg on ago. your head, right? Like where someone cracks the egg on your head, you know? Oh, you it, know that thing? Is that part of the same one? Wait, Why is the Feather Sit as a board as a movie? What? No, like it's from, it's it's in that one that witchcraft movie. What? Well, witchcraft, yeah. witchcraft movie? I'm into witches. Yeah. <laughs> from, like the, from like the 90s? Yes. Yeah. Which one? The one with like the girl who was in Party of Five. Which girl? Um, Claudia. Yeah. So if anybody wants to do trivia, like I am the queen at pop culture. Whatever we can talk about this later. Wait, Claudia um, or Julia? Neff Campbell was yeah, in that film. Julian. Okay. I don't know. It's pretty it good. I, uh, uh, hmm. The Crucible. That's right. Oh yeah, yeah. She was in that. No, it's not The Crucible. <laughs> I was gonna say that's with Winona Ryder, right? Wait, is that? The Crucible. No. The craft, yeah. The craft. The craft. Have to Google it. I just okay. came to me. Oh wow! With the, uh, yeah, the uh, the the loner girl goes to the school to be learned that she's the one true witch, I guess, the most powerful witch ever. Like, oh, that's so against what witches say. In the eighties, we played Lies of Feather Steps as a board, and like the whole premise was to like tell a story about how the person who's being down is, has died and then like you all chant lies the feather stuff is bored and then like you're all supposed to like lift a person it's kind of like a Ouija oh, board right, right, right. Like, you, like bloody mary sort of thing right kind of yeah you say it maybe enough times. I don't know. wait so are we doing that no <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> listeners at home engage in the ritual begin now <laughs> <laughs> That we've clearly delineated. Please be sure your your pentagram is drawn accordingly with the correct number of sides. Y'all, this this took a turn. And make sure you it's use okay. your purple markers, everybody. 
I cannot wait for I cannot wait for Mark to listen to this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, a little time capsule like, note mm, for Mark. Where's, where's, yeah, I don't know what you're going to do with this. Good luck, <laughs> bud. Thanks. Um, it's just like, where's the delete button? Oh, there it is. God. I've already <laughs> derailed one meeting today. Oh, no. This isn't a meeting. Yeah. No, we, we derail our own meetings. That's Good. Like, that's, <laughs> the no, rail that's is so... That's, that's what we're critiquing, right? Mm -hmm. The single track. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We are! Yay! Look at you brought it back around! Good job, Yay. Lincoln! Oh, <laughs> Expertly done. Oh. Expertly done. <laughs> cool. So I, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and wrap yeah. this up um, with our outro, which I will find somewhere on this document. Uh, wait, where is it? Where's the end stuff? Did you have to lead us in your closing ritual? Oh, okay. With our listeners. Uh, everyone close your eyes and summon the prayer in your heart. I don't know. Just any prayer that comes into your mind. That, that's, I'm that's... confused. I don't understand. <laughs> could, you, could you develop a module so that I better understand how to find a prayer? I think that I can actually, you know, I think that's a good idea. I think that what we can do and maybe with the help of our listeners uh, subscribing via Patreon is we can develop an app that will help increase your social emotional learning capacity and help if if more efficiently get you to that heightened level of exaltation and and enlightenment that that the, girl, the, the, girl girl both apps exist already i'm going to send you some no, links but our our app is going to be optimized <laughs> for cognitive and dissonant learning abilities <laughs> yeah, let's definitely talk about these capitalist enterprises of social emotional learning and it our will, Patreon. It will use artificial intelligence and machine learning. <laughs> <laughs> Presented in a, a Gen Z uh, friendly ASMR yeah. read aloud. I learned Gen Z is technically 1995 onward. Really? I wasn't sure what I was. Are you a, are you Gen Z? No. I'm a whatever comes a millennial. Because when you are born in 1995, it suddenly changes. Wow. It's like horoscopes. Didn't they like change a, a month back and then we're like not what we were? I don't know. And then they like took the Pluto planet away. I'm a Leo, but I am much more Virgo like. But I don't know. My due date was Virgo. I love I love that you don't want to do the DND like alignment, but you will fully talk about it. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> With total sarcasm, <laughs> with total sarcasm. I fucking hate horoscopes. Oh my god! <laughs> I, with I'm full a, sarcasm. I, I, have, I have a really good like. Uh, it was like a thing. Was like I'm I'm an Aquarius, um, but it doesn't mean anything to me. And the response yeah. I get is, "Oh, that's such an Aquarius thing to say." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's con I like contradiction. And you'll no, love I was just, the D and D alignment. Like it. It's all good. No, me too. It's okay. Thank you very much, Lycan. Thank you for being here Thank with you us for and having helping me. us understand ourselves better. Yeah. And and we hope to have you back on. Yeah. Um, at a future time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give my sh my name. Uh, you can find me on on the Twitters at PST uh, Lucy. And Lazarus, did you? Oh, I was I was oh. passing it off to you to say your own. Oh, okay. I I think it's PST Lazarus. I think. You say it every time. <laughs> I know. I asked you what your Twitter. How long have you been doing this? Maybe? I don't. I, what, what do I look like? Uh, uh, do you want a honest answer, I, or are we practicing social emotional? That's, yeah, that's I feel like I we're going. shaming you. <gasps> yeah, guys. Are you I, feeling shame? I'm feeling. Uh, how do I? How Can do I manage it, this? Yeah. Can shame? I label Let's it? Talk about it. pain, agony, I'm, suffering. I'm at PST Hunty, but I am never on Twitter. Like I kind of want to be on Twitter more now. Maybe I'll think about it. Actually, I've been adding you like every day. Like, I'm not hey, on Twitter. check it out at Hunty PST Hunty. Never get a response. Are you serious? Wow, that's like wow. No. <laughs> this is how you like that. This is how you do him. <sighs> <laughs> oh, oh my God! Is that a tear? <laughs> it's right? two tears. It's two. Uh, yeah, one out of each eye. <laughs> you were 
shame. Or shame. Just kidding. There's nothing wrong with crying. Lazarus has experienced a tear, everybody. If you can't see it. If you subscribe to the channel and subscribe to our Patreon, we can get send you a photo of, of, of Lazarus's tear. And we should celebrate uh, crying. We can crying should be more. That's true. And celebrate. Right, hold on. Um, hey, Lucy, try again, homie. With what? The outro. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I should do that. <laughs> yeah. Five minutes later. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, if you like the so. If you like the podcast, um, again, please subscribe to us. You can find us on Twitter. We are uh, Public Space Travel on the Twitter or PST Pod. Uh, our online, our website is publicspacetravel.cool. Um, I can be found on Twitter at PST Lucy. Lazarus can be found via at PST Lazarus. Uh, Mark's our shadow producer can be found at PST in the shadows. And Hunty, of course, can be found at PSD Hunty. Please join us, uh, like us, subscribe, leave a comment, share this podcast with your friends. Again, you know, why not subject them to our whimsical delights, our our informative uh, banterings? Go ahead and just subject them to all of the wonder that we have to give. <laughs> um, and we will be back in your ear holes soon. Thanks again. Public, public space travel. Ah, don't worry, buddy.